If it's possible, please kneel with me while we pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, how great you are. Amen. The children has rem have reminded us at the start of this service how great you are. Yes, and Lord, we ourselves proclaim how great you are. Yes, you are. The fact that we are here this morning in our right minds, mm -hmm. being fed, yes, being clothed, yes, Lord, we are grateful to you because you have been merciful. Amen. You have been better to us, O oh God, than we deserve. Yes, and so this morning we praise you and we thank you mm -hmm. and we bless your holy name. Yes, Lord, this morning we come because you tell us to come. Yes, in fact, you said come boldly in the name of Jesus Amen. to the throne of grace where we can find grace to help us in the time of need. Yes. Lord, we recognize that we have many needs this morning. Many of them have been articulated on these prayer cards, Lord. Some of them are still resident in our hearts because they're so painful they can't come out. But we know that you are great. And so this morning we pray through the name of Jesus Christ that you will bring relief. You will bring a solution, O oh God. Father, if we have to go through it even longer, you will bring patience and understanding so that we will know that when it's all over, like Job, we will say, in all my appointed time, I will wait until my change comes. Amen. Father, I thank you this morning for every worshiper here. I thank you, Lord, for every worshiper around the world who recognize that you are the creator. You are the God who blesses you're the God who enfolds you're the God who scaffolds you're the God who gives the the peace that pass it all understanding Amen. and so this morning we say thank you and Lord these requests that are in my Bible father they are sitting here based on the authority of the word of God that you will do something for them and I'm asking even now that your mighty arm will move O oh God in the lives of these people and cause them to realize that you are opening doors. You are delivering. You are giving strength. You are blessing, O oh God. Yes, I thank you this morning for hearing our prayers. Lord, I thank you for blessing this service. And Lord, I pray especially an anointing upon Pastor Santos as he will be delivering the message. Father, may you lose his tongue. May you anoint his mind. May you give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that, Lord, every person here young, old, will recognize that you have spoken. And because you have spoken, Lord, it ought to be final in our minds and in our hearts. Yes. We thank you for hearing us in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
Happy Sabbath, church. Oh, you know, I'll try that again, right? After you heard this. Happy Sabbath, church. My name is Gisela Kroll, and this is Faith Martin, and we lead this ministry. Um, I had the privilege of singing at your church a couple years ago, and I liked it so much. I brought 64 of my friends to sing with me this morning. Amen. Let me tell you about who Kids in Tune and Teens in Tune are. We are a ministry from Madison Campus Church. We started it five years ago with 25 children. Last summer, we had the opportunity of recording our very first album, which I obviously recommend to all of your children. Um, and um, we took the summer off, and when we started back up in September, we had 80 children. So we are missing 16 today. Um, and we are so privileged to be here uh, and sing and praise with you this morning. Can I see the hands of the chauffeurs this morning that had to drive all these kids here? Can we give them a hand? We thank you for your support. Um, we have beyond inspiring these children and uh, keeping them singing and praising the Lord, we have a greater mission which is to provide a curriculum for smaller churches um, that would like to start their own choir. We have a full curriculum for you if you would like to do that. Um, and if you don't, you can drive up to Madison and join our choir. We always have more room. Um, and um, we, we want to inspire every kid out there from our schools and churches to listen to Christian music, to good music. Amen. We are in a very difficult fight here for these souls, and we want to do what we can to have them by God. Amen? Amen. Um, we are also in the process of joining Asian Aid, which is an Adventist um, children supporting um, ministry. And uh, you'll hear more about that maybe in the future performance. But uh, we would like to help children that are not as privileged as ours in other countries and give them food and an Adventist education. Amen? Yeah. And a roof over their shoulders. So that's what Kids in Tune and Teens in Tune are all about. And one more time, we're privileged to be here this morning um, singing this, uh, these songs to you, and we hope you enjoy it.
Amen. There is something moving about uh, many individuals operating in unison in one, and I appreciate that. Jesus prayed for his disciples and us that they may be one, he said, even as you and I are one. Not the same, but one in Christ. May we be unified in his cause as well. Well, I'm here to, as the bulletin says, give you an invitation to give, an opportunity to give. I once learned a song that said, Jesus is a giver, and he gives me good things. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So if he's a giver, I want to be a giver as well. You know, um, <clears throat> we're here in part today because we believe that the Sabbath was set aside as a holy day of worship by God from the beginning. And so it is with uh, our increase, what he gives us. Actually, all of it is from him. But in the Adventist church, we see tithes and offerings as two different things. And I just want to highlight that this morning. Tithe is that 10% portion that is holy to God. It belongs to him, and, and so it cannot become holy or consecrated. It is. It's holy by its nature, even as the seventh day of the week, we believe, is holy because God said it. And so tithe doesn't stay here at Nashville First Church or at any other Adventist church. We send that on to the conference level. We have a hierarchy. So if you're from another church or you've uh, joined the Adventist church and didn't realize it, um, Pastor Santos doesn't make money directly from your tithe. No, it goes up and then is distributed through an equi equitable system to the pastors, our modern-day Levites and priesthood, those who uh, do the ministry for their living. You know, the Levites were not given a share of the inheritance in the promised land, but instead were to concentrate in ministry full-time. So we recognize the tithe is holy. It's not something that stays here at the church. It goes and moves on. And then there, oh, and Jesus even spoke of it, though you may not realize it, he, as he pronounced one of his woes upon the scribes and Pharisees, uh, saying that, uh, you know, you tithe, and yet you do not, uh, you ignore weightier matters of the law. Uh, he said, these things you ought to have done without neglecting the others. So he fully endorsed tithing, Jesus himself. So he believed in that. And then we have our giving over and above tithes. Tithe, 10%, is not all that Jesus asks. He is a giver, and he wants us to be givers as well. How could we do otherwise? And so we give to the other ministries of the church. So those may stay here at uh, Nashville First. Our offering today is for the church budget. It fuels all the ministries of the church. Um, there are other ministries that uh, happen at the conference level, union, and so on, and those are separate and over and above the 10%. We encourage you to give as God has blessed you. No one ever dictated an exact amount on this, but um, uh, generosity is encouraged. And, uh, you know, we have two ways of giving here. Uh, we call them loose offerings when they're bills and coins placed loosely in the offering plate. If you do not designate otherwise, if you just put it in loosely, then those go for the offering of the day. Today, that's the church. So you haven't given tithe if you've given money loosely in the offering plate. The other way is by using the offering envelope and marking how you want your money to be distributed. And uh, we have an opportunity on that um, envelope to differentiate between tithe and our other offerings. We encourage you to do that. I uh, would like to, um, uh, one thing has come up, uh, you may not know it, but I'm married to the treasurer here, so I get the inside scoop, and uh, uh, she has let me know that sometimes people will uh, put on their offering envelope, that's my check, but I erased the routing number and account numbers, so don't try to look, it's not there, <laughs> but uh, some will say, well, I just want to put tithes and offerings on the check, and you decide. Can the treasurer do that? No, nope, she wouldn't dare. So let's say you want to give $500 today. She doesn't know if you made 
$20 last week or $400 last week and what the tithe on that is. So uh, it is, uh, if, if you did put tithes and offerings on a check and did not mark it on the envelope, it's going to all go to tithe. And if that's not what you meant, then please uh, add, add that to the tithe envelope so it's clear, the, the differentiation. Okay, so this morning we have an opportunity to give both tithes and offerings. And in the Adventist church, they are treated as differently. They go different directions. And um, we have the opportunity to give to the Lord's work, both here and far beyond as well, as we return our tithes and offerings. Jesus is a giver, and may we be givers as well. Will the deacons rise, if you can? And uh, we'll... Um, have a prayer of dedication for these offerings. Our Lord in heaven, we thank you so much for that with which you have blessed us. We do live in a land of plenty, and though comparatively some have more and some have less, we all have something, Lord, something that we can give to show our gratitude for your blessings and your mercy and your grace to us. Lord, it is our desire that the work of this church and of uh, your work in general, be extended, be expanded, and go to, to proclaim that loud cry in all the earth. Whether it be in our own neighborhood or our city or beyond, Lord, take these tithes, these offerings, bless and prosper the work. We know that you can carry on what uh, you need to do without us, but with us we can be a united force and be stronger. We pray this blessing in Jesus' name, amen.
This, amen. This song was written as a prayer, and it's not only for these children, but for all our children. And we leave you with one last song, and you will recognize it. And all the people said, amen. amen, amen. And how many of you were blessed by the singing of these uh, boys and girls? Say amen and wave your hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a blessing. Giselle, thank you so much for, for leading out this special ministry. And we'd like to give you a special invitation. If you can sing every week, could you come bring the boys and girls? We would love that. But thank you so much again parents also for supporting this ministry from Madison Campus Church. We were just blessed to have them here. It's time for a heart of praise in Thanksgiving, this part of our service where we thank God and we praise God for specific things that he has done in our lives, in our church. And today we do something special and different. And um, God has been good to Nashville first. It's been at least, I think I can count at least about 15 months ago when I first got introduced to Pastor Erwin LeFlock. And um, I want you to know that he has done a 
wonderful job in ministering for our church family. Amen. But I have some good, some sad news to share that Pastor er, er, Lefloc will be will be uh, taking off for France this Monday. This will be his final Sabbath with us. It's. Um, I'm going to ask Pastor Lefloc to come and join me here in the front. And he's going to be starting, he's going to be looking for ministry in France, in France and um, continuing his ministry there. But it is with sad news that as a church uh, leadership that uh, we are saddened that of his um, departure. But we have been touched and blessed by his ministries. And I've asked... Uh, We've asked Travis if he could share on behalf of the collegiate ministry, say a few words to Pastor Leflock. Pastor Leflock, uh, on, behalf, on behalf of the youth, uh, it's been great having you here. We've really enjoyed time with you and your family. And uh, just thank you for all your hard work and, and the effort that you've given. So thank you. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Leflock. Um, we cannot say the words how much you have meant to this church family. And uh, we can only give you a little token here. We've had an opportunity to have this card signed by some of the church board and leadership. I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Leflock to say a few words. And again, we wish we could keep him here uh, for many years to come. Amen. And pray for that. Perhaps the Lord will bring him back Amen. to Nashville first. Amen? Amen. And... Uh, Pastor Leflock, these are cards that are, again, just a symbol of our token of our love for you, for what you have done for Nashville First. You mean, you mean the world to us. Thank you from the bottom of my heart on behalf of Nashville First. Thank you for the countless time and energy and prayers you put forth to move Nashville in a, in a different direction for God's glory. Well, um, I wish I could be, I could give you a better news this morning, but it was not really ex expected. Uh, we have a, a French expression saying that something like uh, living for a better, better return. In, I don't know if you have that in English. So this is my hope. Uh, I would like to come back. Amen. I would like to serve Nashville first and serve God again. Amen. And I'm going to pray about that. And we'll see what God uh, wants to do with me. <laughs> but I wanted to, th to thank you for the, the time, I, a great time I had here. I have been blessed. Um, thanks to Pastor Santos, I, uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot, more than I could imagine. And it's not done. I need to learn more. And uh, I want to thank him for that. <laughs> and I think, yeah, just... The word thank you is not enough, but, you know, my vocabulary in English is not so big, so this is the only word I can say right now. Um, I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart that I love you. Each of you, uh, I could say in French, je vous aime. <laughs> and um, I want to thank you, each of you, for the support. I would like also to thank God for uh, the joy that I had in my heart to lead some people to baptism. It was, it was a great experience, and I, and I wish to those people to, uh, to keep walking with the Lord and to serve this church. And uh, I'm sure that uh, Nashville First will, will grow faster and bigger. Thank you very much. Amen. <clears throat> Dr. Bignall. Uh, Pastor Laflock, um, on the behalf of the, the elders, we hate to see you go. Yeah. Um, sure. You know, God knows better than we do. Yeah. And as a result of that, you know, there's an old song that says, friends are friends forever. Amen. If the Lord is the Lord of them. Mm -hmm. I will not sing it, but uh, <laughs> I'd like for you to know that we love you very much. We hate to see you go, but we know that God has something bigger and better in store. And Pastor... Uh, fellow elders, uh, could you come up here and join me real quickly? Let's have a word of prayer for Pastor Laflock before he leaves. Uh, I, I tell you, there's nothing better we can do than leave him in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Okay. 
I'll just come and join. Please place your hands upon yes. Pastor Leflock. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come before your presence right now yes. to ask for a special anointing for Pastor Lee Flock. Yes, Lord. As he head towards a new field of ministry, we ask that you will guide and direct him. It's been a blessing to us here. Yes, you have directed him to be here with us and just help us move forward in advance with different ministries. Yes. And now, Lord, with saddened hearts, we come before you that you will just guide, lead, direct, and if possible, according to you, will bring him back, Lord. Yes. We need him here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for what he has done. I pray that you will guide him, be with him in his future, in his yes. family, yes, Lord. that you will guide and direct, Lord, accordingly, and just place a special favor and blessing upon yes. him. Please, okay. Keep him safe and keep him close to your heart. This is my prayer in our prayers. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Like to invite, as we invite all the boys and girls to come on down for special stories, we sing that song, Great Are You, Lord. Here's the basket. Oops. It's right here. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? That's better, good. Okay, can you pick it up, please? Thanks. On the first Sabbath of every month, I come and tell a story to you guys about health. This kind of goes along with our health challenge. And this month, you see that word up there? Or you guys can look up there. New start. Do you notice that the E is Red? What is it? Can somebody read that for me? What does the word say? What? Exercise. N E W S T A R T, new start. And every one of those letters stands for something special that we'll do once, once a month. So, nutrition, we spent January and February on that. Exercise. And the next month will be water and so on. Exercise. Now, watch. Next one, please. That little boy, cute little boy, he fell and broke his arm. Not good, right? And so they put his arm in a cast. How many of you guys know what a cast is? Okay, good. Casts are very hard, and they come in different colors. And sometimes your teacher at school, classmates, your friends at, uh, at home, can write the names on the, on the cast. Cool. And sometimes casts come in different colors, like Next one, blue, next one, orange, next one, pink, and even multicolors, different colors, nice and cool, right? Next one, please. And when they cut the cast, sometimes green, and yes, this is correct, they use a saw. A what? A saw. It doesn't hurt. Now, something happens very, very interesting when a cast is taken off your arm. Next one, the arm shrinks. What? It shrinks, it gets smaller. Who can tell me why the arm gets smaller? Anybody know? Why? Because the cast can get what? Oh, the cast could put pressure on the arm. Yeah, that's true, that's true. 
But there's another reason. Anybody else? Why? Ah, because you did not get enough exercise. Ooh, good answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, notice, see that? What is she doing? She's what? So when your arm shrinks down, the muscles shrink down, to build the muscles back up, you need to do what? Exercise. So now this morning, Sister Lynette said something very, very, very important. I'm going to tell you six words. What you don't use, you lose. I'll say it again. What you don't use, you what? Ah, so if I don't exercise my arm or my muscles, I what? Lose it. So if I don't walk, I eventually lose my ability to walk. If I don't exercise, I lose my ability to be strong. So muscles respond really, really well to exercise. And guess what? It's a part of God's plan. God's what? His what? His plan. So if I eat right, if I exercise and sleep and drink water, I'll be strong and healthy. You know why? Because my body is whose temple? Now somebody says, yeah, Brother Wilson, I don't like exercise. It hurts to exercise and work and run and jump and play and have fun. Being a kid, I don't like to do that. I want to sit home and watch TV play video games all the time, right? But my body is whose temple? So that means that I have a choice. A what? A choice. I can choose. I do what I want to do or I want God to live in my heart. How many of you want God to live in your heart? Raise your hands if you want God to live in your heart. So I need to eat right, right? Take care of his temple. I need to do what else? And God can live my heart just by exercising? Yes. So how many will exercise? How many will exercise? And third question. How many of you guys will be careful climbing a tree? Yeah. Okay. I think so, yes. Now, who wants to pray for us? Anybody want to pray? You do? Can you? No? Anybody want to pray? I'll pray. Okay. Close your eyes. Our heads. Dear Jesus, please bless us that we can exercise and be boys and girls that will play, jump, hop, skip, whatever, just so that you can live in our hearts. Thank you so much. In the name of thy son Jesus. Amen. Go back to seats now. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. The scripture of the day comes from Acts 1, verse 8. The word is, but you shall receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria, and to the end of earth. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you again to the Madison Campus Church. Giselle Pearl, thank you so much for directing the children's choir. Beautiful, beautiful ministry, and we'll do our part to support your ministry. And again, Pastor Lee Flock, our prayers will go with you. I want to draw your attention to the screen for a moment. Uh, first of all, tomorrow there will be a health expo 
from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. We'd like to invite you to be part of that. Uh, we have a special uh, prof a professional, medical professional uh, experts that will be coming to, to minister to you and to the community, so be part of that. Also take a look at the first one. We'd like to invite all the boys and girls who have been taking Bible studies for baptism to join you through with Mrs. Santos and Elder Gibran and uh, the angels and Shannon to be part of that. And also, I mentioned number two as a part of a study group. Look for a study group during the week. If you're not part of a study group, you are missing out in one of the best experience you can have in your Christian walk and journey. So look for that study group. We have, we're starting several of them in various places in the greater Nashville and be part of that. And finally, I just want to mention next week is Religious Liberty Sabbath. We have Amira Al-Haddad, the Director of Public Affairs and Religious Liberty for the Southern Union who will be part of a special emphasis not only for the service but also on the Sabbath afternoon. You know what, the news seems like every week we've been getting about this type of storm warning. They're stating now that again 100 million will be affected by the storm from Chicago to New York, maybe and perhaps we'll get some tail end here in Tennessee. What, what uh, Snow State residents are saying, when will this stop? And in fact, they are praying for help and the latest satellite behind me is showing a back-to-back -back storm. Here's the storm that's going to be hitting right now the, the, the West Coast. And they've been suffering through the worst drought they've had in years. And whereas we're in, we in the South, in the Midwest, and the Northeast are being pounded with what they call epic weather that they don't know how to explain. They don't know what's going on. And take a look. They're saying there's another storm beside it that's going to be coming in the next few weeks. People are wondering what's going to be happening here. People are saying we're tired of digging ourselves out from the snow. And here, this is a picture from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I live in Holland. And this home right here, they have at least 100 inches so far this winter. The most they've ever had. The second worst snow, I think, snow pounded snow city in the Midwest. Imagine 100 inches of snow. And so they're saying, when will this all stop? Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't put the picture up here, but if you're watching for the signs of the times, you will see it. That's, last few days ago, they're going all over and viral in the news, in the internet, in the social me media, that the Pope has actually been connecting with Kenneth Copeland, they're stating basically we do not need to be apart. There's no need to protest anymore. Protest, the Protestant protest is over. We are all Catholics, they're saying. So we should now combine basically together. Ladies and gentlemen, the word of God is telling us that time is coming soon. Whether you like it or not, whether you're ready or not, Jesus is coming soon. We come here every week, and I show this picture because it gives us the context why you come to church. You're coming to church not to see your friends. You're coming to church not because you're paying your dues. You're coming to church because you want to worship God, and you're asking God, Lord, prepare me. Prepare me to be a sanctuary so your Holy Spirit can dwell in my heart, and therefore you can utilize me. Amen? Amen. Pray with me. Father in heaven, we seek your presence right now. Lord, I ask you to use me as your servant to preach this message boldly and clearly for your glory. I have nothing to share unless you speak through this instrument, Lord. I ask you also to bind the enemy, cast him out. He's not allowed in here. He's not welcome in here. Oh, Father, I pray. Press, drill the message you want to your people today that they need to hear. Thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hold up your Bibles. Join me now in holding up your Bibles. Say it with me. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Do you believe it? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our message today is entitled, Preparing for the Future. Jesus looks down upon this earth every week, every day, every moment, wondering, what are my people doing to hasten my coming? What are they doing to prepare for, for this greatest event in world history? If people's attention have not been, been grabbed by the, the world events and the political situation happening in different parts of the world, they said, when will they be ready? Are they asleep? Ladies and gentlemen, we're told in Revelation that God is telling his angels, hold back, my people are not ready yet. He's trying to seal them for eternity. God is wanting to say, I want to take my people forever, but I need to complete the transformation in their lives if they will let me. Amen. And so here, what is taking place, the seal, we've been talking about this for several months, the sealing instrument is who? Help me out, church. Who's the sealing instrument? The Holy Spirit. The sealed, the seal itself, okay? I'm sorry. Backtrack. The sealing, instru no, the sealing instrument is the word of God. The one that's holding the sealer is who? The Holy Spirit, okay? And here what he does through the word of God Every day that you open the word of God, the sealing process is taking place in your life. And as you study the word of God, the truth will come out and you will see God trying to, through his word, changing you, transforming you. Because ladies and gentlemen, this is not just a book, right? And when you read the word of God, the eternal word of God, something happens. I remember receiving a phone call some time ago, I received a phone call. I was in my church office, and, and as I picked up the phone, they said, is this the pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? I said, yes, it is. I said, pastor, this is so-and-so. Do you do visits? I said, yes, I make visits. Would you please make an appointment to see us? We'd like to see you right away. So the next day, I made an appointment to see this young family. As I got to their home, visited with them, I sat in their living room, introduced myself, they introduced themselves, introduced their kids. They said, Pastor, the reason why we brought you here today is because something strange happened to us. I said, what is it? Well, a couple nights ago, it was my birthday, and my mom came in to celebrate my birthday, and she gave me a book as a gift for my birthday. And, and, and she she said, you know, the book that she gave me was called Exorcist. I said, what mother would think of giving her daughter the book Exorcist, right? Well, anyways, I didn't have a chance to take, read that book. I just, when, I, when my mom left, I placed it in my bedroom bookshelf. And it's that night we were fast asleep. There was some strange noise and commotion. We heard rattling and shaking the whole room. And I grabbed for the light switch, and when I turned on the light switch, there was all the books in the library were all thrown over the floor, and I noticed the farthest book was that book called Exorcist. Wow. When I looked in my bookshelf, I saw only one book that was there. I had accidentally placed the book Exorcist beside the Bible. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, God could not stand to have an evil book like that Amen. beside it. Is there power in the word of God? Yes. Amen, you better believe it. And God is trying to place his seal upon his people. The word of God is the sealing instrument. So the more you read the word of God, the more you meditate in the word of God, the process of the Holy Spirit works within you because he's trying to prepare something in you to prepare you, my friends, to have the, the full character of Jesus Christ, right? Amen. Now, uh, we have to work on something here. I've been sharing with the church family several months now, but some of you are new today in the worship, and that is what I've learned from the Zulu people. Now, the Zulu people in South Africa, they're very passionate and aggressive in life. They do everything with great passion and aggressiveness, and when they become Christians, they're also passionate and aggressive. So when they say amen, they don't say, amen, brother. Amen. 
when they say amen, they say amen. amen. And this is what we've been teaching the church family here and wherever I am invited to preach. So when God, when God gives us his word, it is formed so he can transform us so we can reflect the character of Christ. Amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Better. We've been preaching also the last few weeks that the Sermon on the Mount is actually Jesus, I call it the Gettysburg Address, the Magna Carta Constitution where he's saying to the whole world, to his disciples, is actually based on Matthew chapter 5 through 7, the profile of a disciple. He said, this is the kind of people I'm looking for. We studied that. And we also covered last week, uh, two weeks ago, the five marks of a disciple. God, Jesus is saying, you know what, there's a cost to discipleship. And we cover that in Luke. If you missed that, make sure to pick up that, uh, uh, that information or the, watch it in the website. In the Word of God, I invite you now to take a look in Luke chapter 10. We open a new territory in why Jesus is calling disciples. It is because he's pre- preparing a people for the sealing. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. F- follow along with me here. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them, how many? Two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Now take a look at the next verse. Take a look at the next verse here. In verse 2, then he said to them, the harvest is truly what? Great, but the laborers are what? Few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out what? Laborers into his harvest. Ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus preached this and shared this with his disciples, he's seeing people that are ready, ready to surrender to Jesus. People that are ready to give their hearts and surrender all to God. But you know what? Jesus did not only preach it for his time. He could see through time. He could see right through our 21st century, and he knows that there are people who are crying out for help. They're crying that, Jesus, give me hope. We need, we need you to be in our lives. And right here, when Jesus sees that, he says, the harvest is great. He's looking at the, the wheat field, and he's, the wheat are ripening already. He said, these are like people. They're ready to be brought in. He said, but the laborers are so few. And so therefore, we need to do something as a pastor, as leaders. I'm following this format here. It says, therefore, pray. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been praying, and I continue to pray. And I continue to pray that God will bring more labors for the harvest because it is so great. It's how, when God is calling, God will be the one to call people. He's going to place a burden in your life to say, you know what? I need, to, I need to get involved. I need to do something better than just sit in the pew here from week to week, right? Because God is seeing all the people in your neighborhood, your co-workers that needs to be brought in. Let's continue. Jesus basically said them two by two, the 70 disciples, go your way, he said. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves, carry neither money, knapsack, or saddles, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, First, say peace to this house. I'm learning to say that when I come to people, say peace to this house, right? But you know what? And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you and remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things they give for the laborers worthy of his wage. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, notice this, such things as they set before you and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. What is happening, ladies and gentlemen, is this. When you respond to the call of discipleship, you are going in the name and authority of Christ. What word you speak is actually the words of Christ that he has authorized us to speak in his name. Amen? And so you are Christ's representative. You are Christ's ambassador. And so it is not just trying to make friends with people. You are actually Christ's 
representing the Christ in the flesh, your Christ's hand, your Christ's lips, your Christ's mouth. And so here, the part that says verse 9, to heal the sick. I believe God is looking for a people just before he comes again who are fully committed to God, said, Lord, will you use me? And you know what? When I visit people, when I'm call- the people calling me, they say, you know, Pastor, I have someone sick here. And instead of thinking of the normal process of, you know what, why don't you call your doctor? Somehow the, somehow the Holy Spirit impresses me, you know what, this person needs to be prayed for. And at that very moment, we'll say, we need to anoint you. Amen. You know what's interesting, friends? I'm seeing God healing people, many people now, because by believing in faith, that God has a purpose of healing them, not for healing them for that sake, but healing them so they can be used for his glory. Amen? Amen? Amen. It says that whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its street and say, the very dust of the city clings to us, which we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. In other words, when you hear the word of truth, Now is not the time to shut the word of God. While you see the light, walk while you have the light. Walk while you have the light. Because you know what? According to what Jesus said in John 12, lest darkness will come upon you. Every time you take a step forward and say, Lord, I will respond. I will commit my life to you. The devil said, no way. He's going to put place obstacles upon you and he will Press on and he will call forth his legions of evil demons to come and make sure that they don't, they don't make a decision. And ladies and gentlemen, this is why when we hear about this, we, we are very serious about our prayer ministry. When you call one of the uh, leaders, uh, leaders, we will be praying for you like we've never prayed f- before you because we want God to intervene on your behalf. And some of you are here because God has intervened in your behalf. God has delivered you, has freed you to be here. So here it says here, but I say to you that it will be more tolerable in the day of Sodom than for that city. And that 70, they returned. They were so excited because God actually used them. And you know what? I can imagine Jesus was saying, why are you so doubtful that I will use you? You are my representative that I'm pouring my spirit upon you, right? And they said, they said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Oh, my friends, the demons are afraid. They are afraid when people call upon in the name of Jesus. And they leave, they flee. Oh, friends, it's... The devil is coming out more and trying to manifest himself because he knows he has a short time. But we are reminded, Jesus said, I saw Satan, see that word? What? Fall like lightning from heaven, meaning he fell down, meaning he was driven out of heaven, right? Ladies and gentlemen, that is a death knell for the devil, And Jesus is reminding us, my friends, is this. It's not just giving a history lesson because this is what you need to know when you go out in the name of Jesus, that the devil has fallen. It's fallen. And then he continues. Behold, I give you what, friends? Authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, some people are saying, well, you know, it's in the news this last few days. I don't know if you heard about this pastor in Kentucky. He took this literally, so there's a church that actually played with rattlesnakes. And I I saw the video clip of that. And that's going in a different direction what what out of the context of here of Scripture. He was bitten by that rattler and he died. Okay? Now, what this is talking, my friends, in context that I will give you authority to trample on, my friends, the evil forces that is against you. The evil forces that are against the people that are trying to do their destructive work. Amen? Amen. Here it is. I love these words here. And over how many? All. 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 
Every day, the devil will do this to you. Tap you in the shoulders to redirect you in the wrong path, to bring temptations upon your path, or to flash something on the computer screen, or to flash something on the newspaper, or to make, put thoughts in your mind away from Christ. Stay away from that. It says here, name, claim in the name of Jesus the power. It says here, you have the authority to trample. I see the word trample. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Step on it. I said, Lord, in the name of Christ, you are victorious. The devil has fallen. Yeah. It says here, the enemy, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen? You believe that? Yes. Oh, friends, you better believe it because what Jesus is saying, I'm giving this to you if you're my disciples, if you respond in my name. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a precious responsibility and privilege. But nevertheless, don't rejoice. Don't rejoice over this power that you can cast out spirits that they are subject to you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen? Amen? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what I said? Why in the world did Jesus say that? You know why? Because when you are able to cast out demons, you will feel powerful. I remember this incident when I was in Michigan. We're dealing with a demonic possessed young man that was so possessed that when, when, he was, when I asked in the name of Jesus to leave, there was a huge battle there, huge battle. But after that victory, after that victory, I said, in the name of Jesus, you need to leave. After that victory, you know what the devil did? He's placed thoughts in my mind. Hey, Pastor Santos, you are a pastor, all right. All the other pastors could not do this, but you did it. And you know what? The devil was placing pride right away. And I said, Lord, no, 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 no. You are the one who did it. It is to your power. I was just your vessel at that moment. But every step of the way that night, the b- battle was the devil was placing thoughts. Oh, you are a hot shot pastor. And you know what? I, instead of the, the, the temptation to walk like this, you know, a little bit higher. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, I don't have that swagger, you know. That, <laughs> but it will, the devil is doing that. He knows that when his disciple takes in any credit, he will fall down. Daniel is a classic example. When God performed a supernatural act, he said, it's God who did it. I didn't do it, right? Friends, you say, well, do I have to be a pastor to experience this? No. You have been called by Jesus Christ if you respond to discipleship. But rejoice, he's saying this. Rejoice because your name is in heaven. In other words, what Jesus is saying, you need to be in a point you're totally dependent upon Christ. Total upon the strength, the supernatural strength. That's why even Jesus modeled on earth, I'm here to do the will of my Father. Well, he's the Son of God, but he keeps saying, I'm here to do and honor and give glory to the Father. What he's doing, my friends, he's trying to show a model here that we need to be so dependent upon Jesus. And sometimes we see this upon people today. When you, we have things, when we have money, money is a symbol also of power. Position is a symbol of power. And sometimes it, this, it, I call it, it neutralizes our ministry because we start thinking, look what I can do. Look what I can work in, right? And we are taking away the opportunity what God wants to do through you when we start taking credit. Amen. Take a look at this. In Desire of Ages, page 490, it reads, the omnipotent power of the Holy Spirit is the defense of every contrite soul. What does contrite mean? 
humble, penitent. You know, it's in, and basically in a point where it says, Lord, it's all about you. Right? Yeah. Are you with me so far? Amen? Yeah. Not one that in penitence and faith has claimed his protection will Christ permit to pass under the enemy's power. Amen? I only heard amen on this section here. Amen? Praise the Lord. The Savior is by the side of his tempted and tried ones. Praise the Lord. Every step of the way, Jesus has said, I am with you. I'm not going to leave you. Even though when you feel that you're all alone, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is with you. Right? And Jesus is with you. Take a look. With him, there can be no such thing as what? No failure, loss, impossibility, or defeat. We can do all things through him who strengthens us. Right? So when temptations, it says here, and trials come, do not waste, wait to adjust all the difficulties, but look to Jesus, your helper. Amen? Amen? Amen. What, is, what can I get out of this? Whatever problems you're dealing with, say, Lord, you can do it. I can't deal with this. I'm not going to trust in my resources. I'm not even going to trust in my wisdom because in my weakness, I'm going to lean on your strength and infinite wisdom, right? It is when God is looking for people to the point where they're saying, Lord, I need you every day. I need you every hour. I need you. Oh, I need you, Lord. Every hour I need you, right? Right? That is what God is looking for. People saying, when Jesus means everything to them. Right? Right. Here it is. Behold, I give you the authority to trample upon the serpent's corpus over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But don't rejoice over this. What Jesus is saying, do not focus on anything that is a worthy, you will be given credit. People will looking at you. People will, will say many things. Oh, thank you so much for helping me. The first thing that should come out of your lips is praise God or thank God. God did it. It's all God, right? It's all God. Now, I'm just beginning here. I'm just in my introduction here. But I'm going to share this with you. We're going to continue. Just a review. Last time we talked about principles. The principles in discipleship, there's basically three of them. These are like maps that I've shared in the past few weeks. We talked about the first principle in Matthew 28 called the Great Commission. The second, based on the Greek word, Matha 2 And if you remember just this screen right here, my friends, it will make a whole world of difference. The word disciple. It's from the word mathatuo. It's defined two things. To be a disciple. Number two, to make disciples. In other words, my question to you is, are you a disciple of Jesus? You know what a disciple of Jesus is? That means you're totally in love with Jesus. You love Jesus with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Amen? Amen. He means to, to you. That means... You're willing to make the Lord not only your savior, but you're also willing to make the Lord the Lord of your life, right? And then secondly, he doesn't want just to save you. He wants you to be a discipler, to make disciples. And ladies and gentlemen, God is trying to change his church to a new generation when people are saying, he's not interested in members, is interested in people responding to the call of discipleship. Are you willing to do that, friends? I'm looking at many collegiates and young adults here or graduates. You know, you're just starting in life here. And God wants to place you in a platform not where the, all the young adults, not all where all the collegiates go through, but in a platform similar to Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Otherwise, you'll be following the same track like the rest of the world, where God is just another part of their life. God is only part on weekends or holidays or Christmas. 
But when God is looking for, I need a people who will say, Jesus, you're all to me. I will follow you wherever you go. Amen? Amen? Amen. He said, I want to make disciples. Ladies and gentlemen, the central, the central focus of the Gospel Commission is not evangelism. It's not evangelism. I'm, I have the privilege of sharing this to pastors and training them in discipleship and diff- going now in different places. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling them, go beyond just evangelism. Go tell them that they're being called to discipleship. It is not about baptism. Yes, baptism is important, but that's just the beginning of the journey. It's not about teaching. It's not about preaching, not even church planting. It's about discipleship. God is calling us to discipleship. How many of you would like to say, Lord, use me. I'm responding to your call and I'm responding, Lord, that I pray that you will use me in such a way that make a difference in your life. Time is running away fast here. But I'm just going to share this. I'm going to wrap this up with this right here. You know, with the world event that has taken place, I just shared at the very beginning, with the Pope making a grand news, connecting arms with the charismatic movement, I want you to know that's bigger news than you could ever imagine. Bigger news than you could ever imagine. As a fulfillment in Revelation chapter 16, 17, eventually what will happen, my friends, is this. Chapter 13 will take place. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, open your Bibles and look what's going going to be happening. I share this with you because my heart is burdened. When I go to churches and I see pastors and I train pastors, I say, pastors, stop just preaching regular sermons. Stop preaching just sermons that will make people laugh, entertain them, especially if you're calling yourself Adventist pastors. I said, we have been given the greatest privilege to share to the people like Noah did. There's a flood coming. And they don't know the flood is coming. They have no idea because they have no connection with God. Right? And it's not to puff us up. We are special. It is because we have been given the special privilege and responsibility because you know what will happen, my friends, when we don't prepare for that future, we're gonna lose, lose the greatest privilege of, re, of saving our family. Amen. Lot lost his family. Amen. Lot lost his family. You think about that. Yes, he was able to escape the fire from Sodom and Gomorrah. He lost his wife. Right. He lost many sons and sons in laws. Even his two daughters, he was only able to save. I share this, my friends, because my heart is heavy. My heart is heavy because I'm asking the Lord, Lord, when will you now pour out your Holy Spirit? I tell this to people, I said, if you're going to be leaving the church, now is not the time to leave the church. We're so close to gate closing time. The ceiling is almost to be finalized, right? Amen. When God will open all of heaven, the great joy and excitement we, we read in the book of Acts will be taking place right here in the 21st century with great measure. And so God is saying, where are my people? Where are my sons and daughters? They're saying, Lord, count me in. Count me in. I want to be part of you. I want to say, Lord... Use me. Use me, Father. Do not, do not let this time be another time where you say, okay, that's good. I came here to hear just basically that service. But I believe the Holy Spirit's here because somebody here, God's been touching to make a decision for him. Perhaps 
you're that person that's never made a decision for the Lord. And you want to commit your life to God, and I'm going to invite you, my friends, to give an opportunity to come before the Lord. I don't even know what I have set aside for a song here. But I want you to know what God is doing. He's, he's calling for people to fully commit all to Jesus. I'm going to invite you to all stand with me right now. Are we able to put in a screen, change my heart, oh God? One thing that God wants to do is just change in our lives, in our hearts. If we're able to put in the screen, this is a prayer song. And, and I want for us to sing this song, Change My Heart of God. As an appeal to God, Lord, do what you need to do. Join me now and sing it together. Here we go. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. <coughs> you are the Father. I am the clay. Mold me and make me. This is what I pray. Change my heart. like to make a decision for Jesus, you haven't made that decision yet, I'd like to invite you to come and join me to the front here and say you want to commit your life fully to Jesus. I want you to come in and say, Lord, I'm recommitting my life or I'm committing my life for the first time. Join us to the front here. Somehow the Holy Spirit is saying make an appeal today because somebody's going to be making a decision. If that is you, my friends, as we sing this song again, come and join us to the front. I want to give you this opportunity to commit all to Jesus, to commit all to Him. If you want the Lord to, to do what He needs to do to transform your heart, to transform your mind. sing this again. Come and join us in the front if you want to say, Lord, I'm recommitting my life to you. Change my heart. Come and join. Change my heart, oh God. Please come. Don't hold back. speaking to you, come and join us in the front. Hold me and make me. This is what I pray. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. Come and join us. Make a bold statement for Jesus.
be precious to play this one more and sing this one more time, but I'm going to invite you. If you want to say to the Lord, say, Lord, I want a new life. I want a life that is filled with your Holy Spirit, that is totally committed to you. And then after this song, we will close. It doesn't matter if you've been baptized, but you want to just recommit your life to be renewal with the Holy Spirit, then come and join us, okay? Let's sing this one more final time. Don't hold back. Come and join us. My Lord, oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. Amen. 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 May I be like you. You are the Come and join us. Pray now with me, Father in heaven, at this very moment, we come before your presence. We stand before your presence on this holy ground, Lord. We are committing our hearts and our lives to you. We realize, dear Father, that you're looking forward. You're looking forward to coming soon, and, and somehow, we are either neglected or not been aware that you've been called, wanting to use your people in such a way that they will be empowered with great authority. They would be empowered, dear Father, with, to make a saving impact in the lives of people. Oh, Lord, we want to see what you did in the book of Acts where people's lives were changed. The world was turned upside down because people were filled with Jesus. They were totally committed to Jesus. Oh, Lord, I pray, do what needs to be done. Change our hearts. Change our minds. Change us inside and out. Change our family. Change our marriages, dear Father. That will be a marriage a family totally dedicated to you. Oh, Father, we want to reflect the character of Christ in all that we do here. And now as we close this service, Father, I pray that the great outpouring of your Spirit would be upon your people throughout this day, throughout this week, till we meet again. In Jesus' precious, holy name, amen, amen, amen.